Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the November Outlook. I also want to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. I think you'll find this to be a really nice community. Every month I post astrology outlooks like this one for the month where you'll be able to get a general overview and then you can click on a mini report that's just for you and this is all based on the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. I also do weekly tarot pick a card readings where I fuse Vedic wisdom with tarot. I think tarot is a wonderful system as well so you'll be able to tune in for weekly guidance there if you'd like and the other thing I do here is I do astrology case studies uh, specifically on outstanding individuals, people in times gone by, and that's called the Masters of Starlight series. So do keep your eyes posted for that. Today we're going to go through the planetary outlook for this month of November. And we're also going to take a look at the moons, the full moon, the new moon, and then of course the last full moon that's happening. Uh, on the 30th there and I am going to do an overview of the election. I'm going to take a look at the charts of both Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Now originally I wasn't going to. I think I've said on this channel before that I don't want to talk about politics which is true but today I came up with a way you know I think maybe it was Saturn who whispered in my ear because I had this concept negate what is not and I figured out a way that I would be able to talk about the stars in such a way where I share with you what I see but you can be the final judge okay so if you like you can click below I'm also going to put timestamps for everything so you can jump around and watch the bits that you want to watch so if you're pressed for time then just watch the bits that you want if you just want to watch your mini reading that's a very good option. <laughs> I completely understand the desire to stay away from all things election related, but if you would like to hear about it, stick around because I am going to talk about it. I, yeah, I didn't want to, but I'm, I'm going to do it. We, we, we can't not, right? It's, it's the event of the year, you know, so uh, I am looking at it in some detail. All right, let's take a look at the planetary outlook for this month. What have we got going on? So now Rahu is in Taurus and I do believe that this is quite good. This is stabilizing things for us. I'm enjoying this new shift. I think that Rahu and Ketu when they were in Gemini and Sagittarius, I think things were a little bit fast energy wise. I feel like there's a little bit of a slowing down of energy with Rahu now in Taurus. This I think is a good thing. Mars is retrograding out of its hard Kendra aspect to Jupiter. This is also a good thing. There's an easing off uh, of tension, I do believe, for now. Okay, Mars will go direct again on 14th November. I'm seeing basically the energies are going to shift a lot mid-November and that's according to the sidereal Vedic system. Saturn is now comfortable in Capricorn. Uh, he's got a lot of work to do over the next two years, my goodness. And, you know, he's busy pressing the weak links in government uh, and in corporations absolutely everywhere. So leadership is really being tested in a big way. Um, Mid-month onwards, we have the sun coming out of debilitation into Scorpio. So now how I see this month is it's really interesting. I feel like we've got two lovely moons, full moons. There's going to be, I believe, a bit of stagnation around the time of the election. And then mid-month, we've got change energy. We've got movement again. We've got things happening again. So that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, we've got Jupiter moving out of Pluto's grip to join Saturn in Capricorn on 21st of November. So that's another big movement right there. We've got Venus coming out of debilitation on 17th November. So as we see, mid-month is really where all the action is happening. Um, two debilitated planets. That's why I'm kind of saying that there's that bit of stagnation while the election is on. So... Venus comes out of debilitation 17th November. She'll be with Mercury. This is a good thing, 
right? Um, I've got the note here, great time to be creative. Great way to channel the anxiety of this time out, okay? Because I'm sure a lot of people are feeling quite anxious in the lead up to the election. And, you know, I think there's some nice creative potential mid-month onwards for us to just be creative and express ourselves and, you know, um, some change energy is definitely coming. Mercury is moving forward in Libra, goes into combustion when he approaches the sun from 25th November onwards. So as you can see, it's kind of mid-month to the end of the month where things are happening a bit more. I am doing weekly tarot readings, so you can come to the channel for a bit of guidance uh, in the first two weeks of November if you know, you're know you at a bit of a loss or you're wondering what's going on um, because it might just feel a bit, um, I feel like stagnant. I feel like things are quite stagnant is what I'm feeling in that, that period. I know there are a lot of astrologers who are saying that there's tension and chaos and this and that and things could really kick off. I'm not particularly seeing that myself. Um, and I might be calling this episode Play On. And if I do, I don't know if I will, but if I do, what that means is let's all of us just keep being creative, right? Um, you know, it's like the jazz band that keeps playing while the Titanic sinks. It's kind of like we, we just have to keep being creative and we have to keep putting good energy out into the world. And if we can keep doing that, that does keep us focused. It gives us things to do because regardless with the election, regardless of who wins or who loses, you still have to get up the next day and you have to be you. And you have to, you know, take the rubbish out and mow the lawn and, and do all the things. You've still got to be you, right? Um, and the same goes for if you become a billionaire, you know? If you become a billionaire, well, you've still got time. You still have to do something with your life. You still have to be yourself, right? So um, that's why I may call this episode Play On. I'm not sure. But let me get on with the moon report because we do have a bit to cover with the election stuff. Uh, 1st November, so we've got a Barani Aries full moon. Okay, so 31st November. Now, yeah, so I've got it here as the 1st of November, Barani Aries full moon, but that's Sydney, Australia time. Today I thought maybe I should plug in London GMT just to see if it shifts, and it does shift. It's 31st of November, uh, and that also makes it a blue moon. So a lot of people are saying that this is a blue moon. I, yes, it certainly is. Um, I'm seeing a really nice energy come from this full moon. Barani Nakshatra Aries, you know, it's, well, it, it may not be the start of something because it's a culmination energy, but Barani, I'm, I'm letting that lead in this case because there's a beautiful feminine energy that comes from that nakshatra. Uh, and I do believe a healing energy comes from this beautiful nakshatra as well. Where is this full moon happening in the United States chart? This time I thought I'd have a look at the USA chart and I'd just see where is this full moon happening. It's happening third from the natal moon of United States chart. So how I'm going to read this is to say it's a culmination of, of confidence. Um, you know, I feel like people are gearing up to go out and do their thing, right? To go out and vote or to, um, to not vote, whatever it is that you decide, perfectly okay. Uh, but it's, it's kind of a culmination energy and it is around the area of, of confidence. Uh, then we've got 15th November, we've got Vishaka Libra New Moon happening. So here I've got the note, we're standing on the threshold of a new life. Yeah, this is amazing. This is that kind of right there in Libra, we're on the brink of a new life, the brink of looking at a new existence. And this is really at this new moon, a time to shed. I've got the note here, time to shed our materialistic ways. So you as an individual can look at it in that way. But how would we see this for the United States? Well, this is interesting. I'm having a look at the chart here and we've got ninth from the moon in the USA chart. So this new moon is happening ninth from the USA's uh, moon. I read everything from the moon, by the way. I know a lot of people ask in the comments, what's the deal with that? Why do you look from the moon? I find it to be very effective. Um, 
over the years and when I've worked with people and so many charts and everything, I've personally found uh, looking from the moon to be very, very good. Um, and it's one of the reasons is because they are actual physical bodies in the sky. It works very well. The ascendant point is very good too. The ascendant point will show you the physical path of your life, but the moon will show you your mood, your mind, how you feel. And I tend to think that that's very, very important. So if we're having a look at where this new moon, this Libra new moon happens for the United States, it's happening ninth from the moon. It's very perfect, right? Um, there should be new leadership in place uh, or a new authority. Or let's say it's the old leadership in place, back again. Um, they'll have a new lease on life and a new, they'll have, uh, you know, learned a lot from the last four years and be ready to to take the country to new places, to, to envisage new things. So there's a lot of new energy to come at this time. Um, we've got 30th November, Rohini, Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra, Taurus full moon. This is an, another beautiful moon. I, I do see that. I'm kind of looking at the energy here. It's a loving, sensual, beautiful full moon happening in Rohini. You personally, though, may feel restless. You may feel emotional at this time. And I've got the note, think long term, discover new levels of commitment to projects. And you may even discover new projects that you want to start um, thinking about. Not that you'd want to start it on a full moon, but you just want to be contemplating it. You know, you, you, there's a culmination energy. You'll be getting ready, gearing up to potentially start some new projects uh, in the coming weeks after the end of November. Now, where is this happening for the United States chart? This is happening fourth from the moon. So I've put the note here that this will be a, a nice time for the losing side to complete, okay? To kind of pack their bags and realize, all right, this is really over, um, whoever that is, okay? And I'm not, I'm gonna let you be the judge as to who's gonna win or lose, but I will tell you what the stars are saying and what I see the stars are saying. All right, I think we've come to that part now, election. Okay, 12 minutes, we're not too bad. Right, how am I gonna do this? Well, I thought about it today and I had, I felt like I had sort of Mars on this shoulder telling me, go on, have some courage, talk about the election. I'm like, okay. And then I felt like I had Saturn on this shoulder saying to me, you can do it if you negate what is not, and that will help you to keep things focused on the stars so that I talk about the stars and that you be the judge. You get to judge um, who's gonna win, who's gonna not win. So here's how it works, right? So this is how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna look at what happens in terms, I'm gonna look at everything in terms of loss. I'm not gonna look at things in terms of winning, all right? So stick with me, you'll see as I go. I've got the note here, if Trump loses, he can't blame any star, right? But now if Biden loses, I will say he can blame Venus and I'll show you why. So, and I might put some diagrams on the screen and things like that. I'll see how I go for time because it does take a while to edit those in. So in terms of the notes, I've got the note here, Ketu in Scorpio. I've got the note here, hidden voices will be heard. Okay, there's hidden masses, people who are not being counted in the polls. I do believe that. If we have a look at Trump's chart and if we have a look at his dasha setup. Now with the dashas, the beautiful thing is that we can go five levels deep. You know, that's as deep as we can go. I can't click any further or go any deeper. So let's look at the maximum. Let's look five levels into it. So with Trump, What's he running between 2nd November and 5th November? He'll be running Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, Rahu, Saturn. Okay. What's Biden running? Biden, during that same time frame, 2nd November to 5th November, he'll be running Jupiter, Rahu, Jupiter, Venus, Venus. All right. So now this interests me a lot. Um, on this basis, things are looking strong for Trump, stronger, when we just look at the Antardashas. Why is this stronger for Trump? He's got Saturn here twice. Saturn is very good for him right now. Saturn is third from his moon, sixth from his ascendant. You can't get better than that. That's the best transitory position Saturn can be in. If I was doing a reading 
for this chart without knowing who it was, I'd be saying that Saturn is looking to give you opportunities. He's looking to build the next platform up in your life, especially third from the moon. Very much so. It's a really good transit. Biden, on the other hand, is running Jupiter, which is great for him. If you look at his Jupiter Ishtafala score, it's high. It is 54.7. Trump's um, Ishtafala score on Jupiter is also very high, 40.71. So as far as I'm concerned, both of them are running a great um, dasha here with Jupiter. Jupiter is looking to help both of them. But where is it not working out for Biden? It's this Venus, Venus. It's a disaster for Biden. Why is it a disaster? Because Venus is sixth from his moon in transit and it's debilitated, right? This is not good. Um, and that's why I say if Trump loses, he can't blame any star because I don't particularly see anything blocking Trump star wise. But if Biden loses, I say he can blame Venus. Okay, it's this, that's the place where it's pinching and it's hurting, it could be a problem. And that's what I'm seeing there. Uh, for Trump, let's see what I had a look at. So the other thing we've got happening in Trump's chart is we've got a Rahu return is happening. Now this is fascinating and I wanted to see, all right, I'm going to click back through the years and I'm going to see when did he last have this Rahu return. It's kind of every 18 years and I wanted to see could I identify a pattern. So I went back 18 years. The last time he had one of these was 2002 and the time before that was 1983. Now 1983 I could see, all right, he received a Jewish National Fund Tree of Life Award after he helped fund two playgrounds, a park and a reservoir in Israel. So I thought, okay, that's something positive. What I was looking for was I was looking for positive things happening in 2002 and 1983 because I wanted to identify a pattern. And I thought if, you know, if say for example, I'm seeing that he became bankrupt or he had a divorce because he's had a divorce splashed all over the media, he's had bad things happen. So I was looking for, can I see a pattern of bad things? Can I see a pattern of good things? What am I getting? So I've definitely got a good thing here in 1983. 2002, I couldn't find too much I did find that he was asked about the Iraq war and that was the first time he was asked about something like that. And I believe he said that he was pro the Iraq war, but then in 2003, 2004, he retracted that and he said, no, 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 I think it was a terrible idea. But that's kind of interesting that he was asked in 2002 because it was like he was being asked, okay, if you were running the show, what would you do? So it's a kind of a, a presidential type thing that happened. But then I did some research and I found, okay, he's got this, um, Wagner's College gave him an honorary doctorate of humane letters in 2004. And I'm like, okay, what happened in 2004? So that sent me on a bit of a great big wild goose chase and I had a look at 2004 and I had a look at what was happening there and I saw oh wow there's a Karl Sarpa yoga forming there. So then I decided let's click through the months and see every time there's a Karl Sarpa yoga happening for him what happens and I identified a very solid pattern and I'll read it out for you now. Basically every time there's Karl Sarpa yoga in the sky for this man things seem to he seems to be rewarded. Okay, so I'll, I went back and I saw that there was one in 2003. So 2003 was the year that he produced and hosted The Apprentice. That's when the whole Apprentice thing started, which was a good thing that happened, right? Um, 2004, that's when he got that honorary doctorate thing given to him. Let's have a look. Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters, so that's 2004. 2005 is another Karl Sarpa Yoga, he marries Melania. 2008, uh, that's when he was thinking of running for president as an independent. 2012 was the next one. He receives Liberty University's Honorary Doctorates of Business and Law. So he received that in 2012 and he received it in 2017. 2017, there was another Karl Sarpa there in the sky. Um, 2013, there's another 
um, Carl Sapper in the sky, this one's kind of funny. He was inducted into the celebrity wing of the um, worldwide, it says WWE Hall of Fame. Is that like a wrestling foundation or something? I don't know. I mean, that's, but it's what it is, is it's, <laughs> It's like an honor or it's an award, okay? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a pattern and there's a consistent pattern of him getting good stuff coming, right? So he got married, he got this honorary doctorate, he got inducted into a celebrity wing of this, okay, it's WWE, but it's something. That was 2013. 2016, President of the United States, right? Carl Sarper started from 5th September 2016 to 27 December 2016. 2017, he's in talks with Kim Jong-un, who's a um, Carl Sarper in the sky. And when I read about that, it, it was talking about how he was, they were love letters between him and Kim Jong-un. I know, it's weird, but it was positive. Um, 2018, brief Carl Sarper yoga, August 2018, by which time peace had been achieved with North Korea. Then we've got 2019 and 2020. Now, uh, the information on Wikipedia is overwhelming uh, as to all the things that he's been doing. And not a lot of it's positive in these years. Not a lot of it's positive, I'll tell you when, 2018, 2019, 2020 is a lot of negativity. But what I put the note is that a Carl Sarpa might have been um, the good thing that happened from Carl Sarpa because I am identifying a strong pattern that Carl Sarpa is helping him. Right, so it may have been protecting him. Um, there have been assassination attempts, uh, all these kind of things, a lot of enemies. So maybe it's been offering some kind of protection. Uh, when do we have the next Kaya It's 2021, 1st January 2021 to 27 March 2021. What's happening on that day? The inauguration, right? So inauguration day is 20 Jan 2021. There'll be a Kaur Sarpa in the sky. Uh, if you have a look at his birth chart, he's basically got Kaur Sarpa in his birth chart, which somehow I never clocked that, but then <laughs> I did today. I was like, oh yeah, he's got one in the birth chart. I mean, it's just moon is like stepping out for a little wonder, but I don't think that counts too much. What I've identified is that every time there's a Kaur Sarpa on, good things happen for this person. So that is really, really interesting. So what I'm saying for the election is that if Trump loses, he can't blame any star, right? It's going to be his own free will that loses it for him. If Biden loses, well, he can blame Venus because I don't think Venus is supporting him. But otherwise, you know, it's... it's um, it's not too bad. Inauguration day, I had a look at the um, Antardashas as well. How are we doing for time? We're running out of time, but that's okay because I've just about come to the end of this anyway. Uh, Trump is running Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Jupiter on 20 Jan 2021. Biden would be running Jupiter, Rahu, Saturn, Saturn, Jupiter. So is Saturn favorable for Biden? It's 10th from the moon, not so good. It's third from the ascendant, that's good. So it's kind of 50-50 okay for him. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not ideal either. Is Saturn favorable for Trump? Yes, on both fronts. Third from the moon, sixth from ascendant. The other thing is there's a presence of Ketu uh, in this um, Antardasha setup, which I believe is showing support coming from past life and or hidden places unaccounted for places. Also, we have Ketu in Scorpio at this time. And the other thing I wanted to say there, we're just about to run out of time on the, on the card, it's flashing red. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about that is, sorry about that, the memory card filled up, it's what happens at 24 minutes. But I think I was gonna talk a little bit about this concept of sympathetic resonance. Um, that has come into my mind because of Ketu in Scorpio, which is really interesting. He's got Ketu in Scorpio. It's a Ketu natal return as well, right? When when Rahu returns, so does Ketu. So it's it's that axis is right there. And you know, as I saw from his past, when Rahu return happens, it's a good thing for him. It's not a bad thing. 
by looking at his past. That's what I see. Um, the other thing is, yeah, this concept of sympathetic resonance, this Ketu in Scorpio um, for him, you know, and I started thinking about, um, about the hidden people that are going to come out and support. Uh, that is something that I do see. That it's a Scorpio thing. It's a Ketu in Scorpio thing. I looked at the chart of Margaret Thatcher. Simon Parks, I'm a big fan of Simon Parks. I'm a member of Connecting Consciousness. I watch him, I also watch Sasha Stone. Simon Parks recently said that Trump would win if there was um, a silent majority that would come and vote for him. And I think that's quite true. He mentioned that's what happened for Margaret Thatcher. So I looked into Margaret Thatcher and I had a look at her chart and I noticed from 1979 to 1990 she was in power and I was like, whoa, that is a long time. I, mean, I knew she was in for a while, I didn't know it was that long. And how did that happen? Because she was very unpopular. She wasn't the kind of person that anyone would say that I'm voting for her. And yet many people did. And I looked um, at her chart, I got the impression that it was sort of everyday people that were voting for her. I think because I looked at her sixth house, there was something I was looking at and it occurred to me that it was everyday people and working people, right? Um, whereas with Trump, it's kind of interesting. I feel like it's sort of hidden people. It's the Scorpio thing. Uh, it's the Scorpio factor at play there. I think I was also going to mention this thing of sympathetic resonance where like you, sound, you have two um, two pianos and they're both perfectly tuned. Let's say they're, they're both. Let's say you bought two Steinways from the exact same place, exact same everything. They were both made on the same day, both perfectly the same, both perfectly in tune. You sound a key on one piano, the other one will start um, sounding. And I really, yeah, got the sense of that with this Ketu in Scorpio that maybe there's going to be some effect like that happening here. Uh, I think K2 in Scorpio might be, might be a positive thing. But I, I hope that's a good enough overview of the election and I hope I've done it in such a way that I'm not showing you know, any, any preference to any one or the other because I don't have any preference towards one or the other. And the other thing is I want you to judge. So you can judge the quality of the free will of each person, okay? From the star perspective, you know, I am saying that, um, that Trump can't blame any stars if he doesn't win. If he doesn't win, it's because of his own free will. It's because he messed it up. And this Karl Sarpa Yoga thing that I've discovered, that Karl Sarpa Yoga keeps giving to him, this also explains why it is that someone who you know, is not the best person or has some, you know, um, moral issues or, or whatever, like can still keep winning and achieving and getting stuff. I've seen this happen with a lot of people. You know how it is. You'll hear about someone who hasn't had a partner for 10 years and then all of a sudden they've got five people, right? I've seen this time and time again. When a planet wants to give to you, it gives. I've seen this happen as well uh, with people very close to me in my life that um, they'll be dating someone and let's say they haven't got married or whatever but Saturn is going through say six from the moon or something like that and the Saturn wants you to get married. You're not marrying this boyfriend that you're with so Saturn will give you men. He'll just, give, he'll just keep giving you men kind of thing. It's really weird. I have seen this where it's like, you know, sometimes regardless of um, whatever you've been doing in this life, if a planet wants to give to you, it will give to you. And I think there is quite an established, um, quite an established pattern here with the Karl Sarpa Yoga, that it's clearly a thing that wants to give. So, you know, as for how these people are doing with their free will and what they're doing with their free will, well, I don't want to judge that. You can judge that. You can have a look and assess that and see which you think um, is doing the better job with their free will or whatever it is. But from a star perspective, uh, yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's, 
There's little hindering either of them, but I'd say that there's Venus hindering Biden. He can, if he doesn't win, he can blame Venus. That's what I'm seeing. All right, I think we better get into the mini readings now because otherwise time will just drain and these are really important. So Aries moon, welcome. Welcome Aries moon. Let's take a look at what's happening in the sky for you personally during the month of November. So I'm really seeing the activity and movement is going to happen mid-month. That's when things are going to start moving again. It's, it's been a bit quiet, I believe, and I think it's going to be a little bit quiet for, for a little while longer. Um, if that changes, don't worry, I'm still supporting through guidance on the channel through the pick a card readings. You can come and have a look at those, but hopefully this um, guidance is good for the month. So you've got sun eighth from the moon. So this is we're looking at kind of mid-month onwards, okay, for this reading. Um, mid-month onwards are looking at sun is going to move. Uh, eighth from the moon is this a good thing for you I'd say be careful health wise um, rest if you feel the need it's not a great transit for physical health so if you're not feeling high energy or you feel like you need a rest do take a little bit of time out not the best time with in-laws as well um, so if there's any stress or tension there you know you just might want to um, take it easy on that front, uh, you've got Venus and Mercury will be seventh from the moon. This is quite good. You might feel more creative in your communications, which is always a good thing. Um, you know, you might feel that creative impulse uh, a bit more when Venus leaves her debilitation spot. So be positive, be creative. It's a good month for you to be creative. I've got the note here, don't push any strong agendas in your relationship, in your marriage, um, or even in your business, right? Um, so if you've got something you really want to do or you really want to achieve or make happen, or go slow this month. This is not the month to be pushing anything. Um, I've got a note, there will be better times coming for both of these areas. So don't, don't push anything there. Um, let's have a look at Libra New Moon for you, 15th November. This is happening in your seventh house. This is quite nice. I've got the note here, make a wish for your relationship or for love. So if there's something you want to wish for, if there's a seed that you want to plant, is there, you know, um, what seed would you want to plant on the 15th of November for your relationship or for your love life? Okay, that's something just to be contemplating. Um, how would you like it to be? And it's important for us to use our focus, to focus ourselves and to look at what we want to create, right? We shouldn't always be looking at the problems in our love life and oh, what do I need to fix or what do I need to get rid of? Let's look at what we want to create. And that's what this month is really going to be about, that creativity. It's that creative energy, that creative impulse. This is a really good month for that. Uh, 30th November, we've got Rohini full moon happening in your second house. Okay. Mm, so this will be, yeah, this should be all right. This should be quite nice. You should be able to release some old dynamic from family life. So this could be something from childhood. This could be something from how you were raised or something from some time ago. If there's some emotional thing that you feel you're ready to really let go of, um, it, it's a thing of maturing and you're ready for that next step of maturity now. So that's really nice. Uh, and by doing that step, by taking that step of maturing and shedding some old thing, that's also really gonna help your love life as well. So Aries Moon, thank you so much for joining. Please remember to subscribe and please remember to like and comment and all that. If you wanna comment, you can. Uh, okay, we are now gonna welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this month, I really see the movement is going to start happening mid-month onwards. I feel like there's going to be a bit of a lull. If you'd have watched the introduction, you would know uh, what I've said there, but I, I do tend to think that there's not going to be too much happening. But mid-month, think we're going to have change energy. We're going to have things happening again. So for you, and we're really looking for 14th November onwards, we're going to have the sun is going to be seventh from your moon. So what does this mean? Uh, and by the way, you can watch from your moon and your ascendant. I should have said that for Aries. I didn't. doesn't matter. Um, 
you can watch both all right watch from your ascendant and your moon place so for you sun is seventh from the moon uh, i've got a note here watch out for a drain on your physical energy yeah this could be a bit taxing um, on your your physique you know you might feel a bit tired do take time out if that's the case i've got the note here be careful in conversations with romantic or business partners that is always a good thing uh, you might just want to be a bit more um, just kind of take your foot off the accelerator a little bit maybe uh, in those areas don't be don't be being authoritative in those areas um, for, for kind of the end of mid-month onwards to the end of November. All right, we've got Venus and Mercury is going to be sixth from your moon. I've got the note here, you might feel more creative in how you communicate, um, but this is an interesting one. Let your logical self lead the way. Venus is not in the best position here for you. Six from the moon, it's debilitated, right? Uh, okay, it's in Libra, but it's not in its best house. So your Venus, your heart, um, the way you feel in that way, that's, that's not firing on all cylinders, but your logical self will be, right? So I've got the note, let your logical self lead the way and uh, perhaps let your emotions take a back seat for this month, right? Um, it doesn't mean you can't be creative. You can certainly be creative. When Venus and Mercury get together, they're very, very creative. So it's a good month for that, but it might be more mercurial in nature um, is, is what I'm saying there. It would be good if it would be. Let's have a look at the new moon. Where is that happening for you? So that's 15th November. It's happening for you in the sixth house. Okay, so I've got the note here, make a wish for any projects close to your heart, especially if those projects um, are going to serve the collective or serve others. So if you've got any projects like that or things or a business that you want to start or that you are running or a side thing that you're working on or maybe you're writing a book or but it's something that you're doing that's you're designing to to serve and help the collective right um, you can make a wish for that project success this is a really good time to do that on the 30th of november you've got a full moon in rohini nakshatra happening in your first house this is a lovely lovely full moon i've got the note here it's a healing full moon i think it's going to be filled with healing energy so one of the things i have been thinking about is you know we've got these two very healing moons flanking the election which does make me wonder hmm, i wonder i hope you know they're not needed because there's going to be a lot of tension or chaos i'm not sure about that but i definitely get the feeling that this is a, a healing full moon um, it's happening in your first house this is important for you uh, be sure to pamper yourself a good time for a spa day if you can get away um, or maybe just a bit of time out to nourish your physical body this is also a really good time to release any negative perceptions that you hold about yourself okay um, that's a big one how do we do that sometimes we can do that by actively focusing on what is good, what is going right, what do we love about ourselves. Um, so sometimes we can, if we put our focus there and keep our focus there as a habit, we can then start to release any negative perceptions we have about ourselves. So that's definitely one way. Um, but it's definitely time now to let go of those old perceptions and if you look at those old perceptions you probably find that they don't come from you they come from someone else they come from a parent they come from a friend they come from a societal thing or a cultural thing you know um, who says we all have to look a certain way or all have to be a certain weight or you know all have to have perfect skin no we don't have to we need to be ourselves right so um, if there's any negative thing that you're holding on to at that Rohini full moon, and especially to do with what you look like, actually, and especially to do with beauty. Um, so it's good that that just came up. That thing about, you know, we adopt society's ideas about beauty, right? Why, why do we do that? Why don't we um, create our own ideas? So 
Rohini full moon is a good time to let go of any negative perceptions you hold about yourself, especially how you look and feel physically as well. So Taurus moon, I'm wishing you well this month. Um, stay safe out there if you're out there in America and the election is all kicking off and going crazy. Don't worry, have your spa day, enjoy, you know, retreat, be at home, all that kind of nice stuff. All right, Taurus Moon, well, thank you so much for tuning in and we're going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, as with all signs, what I'm noticing is this month, the activity is really going to start up again and start happening again, sort of mid-month onwards. So I'm going to talk about mid-month onwards because mid-month, we're looking after the 14th of November, we're going to have sun, is going to be sixth from your moon. So this is, oh, this is great. I love this transit for you. I'm so happy, Gemini Moon. I've got good news. You're going to have a boost of energy. Yay, you probably need it as well. We all do. Well, you've got one coming. So you might have extra energy. You might have a boost of energy. You might feel like you're able to win over the competition or you're able to get ahead or you're able to make progress. Basically, the sun is here to help you. This is really, really good. Uh, Venus and Mercury is going to be fifth from your moon. This is also really nice. You might feel more creative in how you communicate. Uh, and especially how you communicate with your children or with a romantic interest. Maybe there's someone on the scene and you know you feel uh, more creative in how you communicate with them. Um, this is a really good time to be creative and it's a good time to see if you can tune in and, and catch those great ideas that come from the ether and get them out. Now for you, I've got the note here, if you can capture some new inspirations through your feminine side, your Venus is strong at this time. So this lovely energy that you've got here this month, and it is about being creative. It's about putting your creativity out into the collective because It'll also be a good way of clearing out any anxiety you've been carrying in the lead up to the election and all the change that's happening in the world. Um, just a good way to channel that out. You know, you want to cycle some new energy through you. So this is a really good time for that. Let's have a look. We've got a Libra new moon happening in your fifth house, 15th November. So yeah, I've got the note here. Um, this is a great time to make a wish for a new romance if you're single. So maybe you want to start dreaming up who that special someone is. Give your request to the universe, um, you know. Or you might be wanting to make a wish for some creative energy, for some of that beautiful creative energy that's about this month to flow through you. On the 30th of November, we've got Rohini full moon. Uh, this is happening for you in your 12th house. This is lovely. This is a really big dreamy moon happening in your 12th house. So great time for a local getaway if you can, like a night or two somewhere different. Um, but if not, don't worry because this is just the perfect time to release any stuck attitudes, any dogmatic old ways, any traditions, say for example, that haven't been working for you, anything rigid in your life. You know, you might want to just kind of um, change all of that. You might just want to, you know, completely change any old habits that aren't serving you at this time. And I've got the note here, experiment with being free of rules. Right? What would your life be without any rules? How would you be? What would you do? What would you want to do? This is a good full moon to be exploring that kind of thing. So this is a really nice full moon for you. Um, I'm really liking the look of that. So Gemini Moon, thank you so much for stopping by. Remember, you're very welcome to look at your ascendant uh, as well. So just click on your ascendant sign and you know you can kind of formulate um, a combination of the two reports to give you a full overview for the month. So thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we have got a lot of activity happening mid-month onwards. So we're really looking at the 14th to the 17th of November. That's when a lot of these shifts and changes that I'm going to talk about are going to happen. So we have the sun is going to move 
fifth from the moon for you this is kind of after the 14th so this could be interesting for you at work um, seniors or people in authority or people above you might be scrutinizing your work a bit more than normal you might be feeling a bit more tired um, a bit drained a bit of a drain on your energy there might be more worry or anxiety as well you might be worried about your children as well okay so the sun being fifth from your moon is not the best placement let's see if we've got anything nice you do have this is nice venus mercury fourth from your moon this is lovely uh, because this is great energy at home great energy in the home great time to redecorate your home or be creative at home maybe you want to change things up um, make it more comfortable or get it ready for the change of season now if you are here in the southern hemisphere you might want to get things ready for well spring and summer if you're up there in the northern hemisphere you might be want to make you might want to make things more cozy more homely uh, i've been watching some vloggers and they've been getting pumpkins you know to carve in their home and all that kind of thing and well november we would have been done by that let's see i'm recording this on the 21st of october that's why i'm saying that but um you might be wanting to make things more cozy for the winter that's coming so let's take a look at libra new moon where is that happening that's happening in your fourth house on the 15th of november so i've got the note here that you can make a wish for more love in your life um, more love with family more home time uh, so what would you want to wish for with home well the other thing is if you're looking to move or if you're looking to buy a place or any of that and i know a lot of that is really slowed down now with all the things that are going on at the moment but it's still possible people are moving um, and people are buying and selling and doing that so if a new home is what you're looking for wish for that you know this is a great time to plant a seed for the future that, that you want to see yourself living and the other thing is maybe you want to plant this seed for 10 years from now okay don't be limited um, as to when on a libra new moon in your fourth house great time to to be wishing for a new home if that's something you want or a new place to live uh, let's have a look we've got a rohini full moon happening 11th house for you on the 30th of november this is a major culmination in your house of networking and wishes hopefully you're completing something really really big uh, and really good and this is a really great time to release any tension that you might be harboring with friends or co-workers um, and i've got the note here as well ask for healing throughout all your contacts so think about all your social media profiles and everywhere where you've got contacts maybe it's your phone just checking the time um, maybe it's your phone list maybe it's your but wish for yourself and for everybody you know through all your contacts and i want everyone that i know who comes in my vicinity who interacts with me i wish for healing for everybody this is a good time to be doing that so that's around the 30th of november and that's happening in your 11th house all right cancer moon well thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome leo moon leo moon welcome thank you so much for joining we're going to take a look at what's happening for you so mid month onwards is when all the movement is going to start happening again we're going to have sun move to be fourth from the moon so we're really looking at 14th november onwards um, so i've got the note here you might need to rest more uh, work might be stressing you out this is not a great time to do property deals as well okay um, so if you're looking to move buy sell any of that not not the best time venus and mercury is third from your moon i've got the note here let your heart lead in communication so your venus is really really well placed um, you can make use more of your feminine side this is whether you're a guy or a girl it doesn't matter we've all got masculine and feminine within so really let your feminine side um, take the four when it comes to communicating and creativity for this month and let your logical side take a back seat 
We've got Libra New Moon happening for you on the 15th of November. That's in your third house. So this is a really good time to plant a seed or make a wish for more courage. Always a good thing. We always need more courage, more courage to do the things that we really want, to live our lives more fearlessly. Um, and you can wish for this for yourself and for all of your friends as well. Everybody is connected to you through your social media, through your phone contact list, everyone you know. Make a silent secret wish for them too, that they are more courageous as well. Uh, on the 30th of November, we've got Rohini full moon happening. That's in the 10th house. So there's a major culmination happening for you at work. There's probably uh, maybe a big project is soon to complete, uh, or it might be a dynamic with how you work or how you interact with your boss or how you interact with people around you. Um, this is not a great time towards the end of this month to be initiating new work projects. Uh, there will be other better times to initiate something new to do with your work. I've got the note here, allow the full moon to happen before you initiate or start. Yeah, any new work projects. Um, good time to be creative, but not, not the best time to be starting massive or things or big projects or any of that but um, creativity is a general thing for this month and it, as a way to ease any anxiety if you have any anxiety or um, you know as a way to kind of bring in some new energy because when we're creative we bring in something new and, and very often we cycle the energy uh, and we can flush out old energy that way as well. Caroline Mace talks about the fact that people, you know, sometimes they can get sick if they aren't being creative. So if people aren't being creative, that trap, that energy can get trapped in you and it, it can even cause sickness. So um, that's a really interesting thing. And this month is a really great month to be creative as a way of flushing out energy, bringing in the new, flushing out the old. So. Leo Moon, I hope this is a good month for you. Remember, you can always watch your Ascendant as well, okay? So I wish you well, take care. We're now gonna welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome, thank you so much for joining. All right, let's take a look at what's happening this month. Really, this month, the, the main thing that's happening for everyone is we're gonna have new movement, new momentum forward, new energy. All of this is really gonna start mid-month onwards. So this reading is quite focused on that. I'm also focusing on the faster moving planets this time around as well, because that's where the new fresh energies are coming in from. So 14th November onwards, we're, we're having a look at all this movement. So we're gonna have sun move to be third from your moon. This is a great transit, wonderful. The sun is here to boost you, give you energy, it'll give you courage, um, you know, great time to expand your network circle, lift your profile, at work, great time to apply for a job or get a promotion or switch job if that is something that's, um, you know, on the horizon for you or that's something you've been thinking about. This is a great time for that. Venus, Mercury, second from your moon. This is lovely, really good energy, Virgo moon. You're one of the lucky ones. You've got very nice energy uh, this month, so that's fantastic. This is a great time to be with the family. Um, you know, you might be creative in how you communicate with your family as well. This is also a really nice time to splash out and buy something extravagant or beautiful or artistic or, you know, something maybe that you've been eyeing out for a while. Um, don't go too crazy. Obviously, you know, um, Saturn would like us always to be a little bit conservative financially, uh, especially the way Saturn is right now. So um, don't go overboard. But if there's something that you have been eyeing out for a while and you want to buy it, um, this might be a time that you feel inspired to do that. Uh, Libra New Moon is happening in your second house. And that's from the fifth. Well, that's on the 15th of November. And yeah, this could be a time where you make a wish for something material. Maybe there's something that you are eyeing out. Maybe you don't want to buy it. As I say, second from the moon. I mean, you could be buying something or you could be just adding something to your wish list. So um, it's a good time to make a wish for something material that you want to buy or something that you're excited about. 
uh, for you and your family or for both. So it might be for the house as well. Um, but yeah, it could be a time to be buying something or expanding your wish list. So it's really nice. Uh, 30th November, we've got a Rohini full moon happening in your ninth house. This is really interesting. This is a major culmination in your beliefs, in your belief system, right? Um, what do you believe? You know, it's a really great time to shed beliefs that are no longer serving you. And I think generally in the collective, we're all starting to do that, aren't we? I mean, I've, I've been shedding loads of things over the years, actually, over recent years. But um, what do you believe now? And maybe it's a good time to take stock, actually, um, on that Rohini full moon where you can actually look at yourself and you can say, what do I believe now that I didn't believe five years ago, that I didn't, I didn't believe 10 years ago? You might see, actually, as you do this activity, you probably see how much progress you've made. You probably see how you've woken up over the years. So this is a very good stock-taking time for you on the 30th of November. Um, a really good time to be contemplating, okay, you know, um, where, where am I beliefs wise? And if you've got a journal or, you know, you like to write things down, it's a really good activity because I often think we don't do that enough. We don't, we're so busy trying to make the next step or progress or improve or fix something that we forget to stop and look and see, do you know what? I've actually done quite a lot or wow, I've actually made quite a bit of progress. So for you, this is a really good energy and time to do that. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, the other thing is with your beliefs, you can find out what your beliefs are by what is working in your life. So you've got some good beliefs in place and by what's not working in your life. So if something's not working for you, might be some beliefs that are creating or attracting that. I've got the note here, write them down. So write those beliefs down that you don't want, uh, rip them up or burn them. And I've done the whole classic, I rip them up, put them in the recycle bin which is maybe metaphorically not the best thing. Hmm. I have burnt them as well. So, you know, I haven't noticed too much difference either way. I find the act of ripping them up is just brilliant. What happens afterwards doesn't matter too much. All right, Virgo Moon, well, thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Uh, for everybody across the board, really, the momentum and movement is going to start happening again really the 14th of November and onwards. We're going to have new energy, new movement. Mars is going forward. New moon, there's a lot of things happening mid-month. So the sun will be second from your moon at that time. So there could be a drain on your finances this month. Um, be careful with spending. The other thing is sun second from the moon. Be careful with how you talk to your family. That's another thing just to keep an eye on. You, know, you might want things to be a certain way or something like that, but just ease off um, in that area. Um, Venus Mercury first from your moon. This is, this is nice. It's a great time to be creative generally. And I'm saying that to all signs that this is a really good month for creativity, a really good month for cycling through the energies. If you're anxious, if you're, you know, any of that, be creative, right? Do something creative, um, express, what's happening but for you this is happening in your first from the moon so do you want to be creative with your appearance right um, maybe it's time for a new hairstyle maybe it's time for a new color or a new image or something just radically different to what you've ever done um, and i've got the note here your heart will guide you as to what you really want so let venus take the lead we've got venus and mercury here but venus is very well placed for this so think venus think what would venus want to do like if venus took you shopping what would you buy maybe it would be very different uh okay so what's happening new moon wise libra new moon is happening on 15th november for you in your first house so this is a time to make a wish for yourself for your whole life if you could plant a seed if you could start something now that's new what would it be what would you want to do um yeah, this is planting that seed for the person that you want to become, right? And this is really interesting. Uh, I remember one of my friends, you know, when I used to work in advertising a long time ago, he really wanted to become a creative director. And he said that, well, the way I'm going to get there and do that is I'm going to start dressing like one. 
and he started experimenting with his look because he knew that in a few years I want to be a creative director. So he started to look at, okay, how do they all dress? And um, he even got, I think, some glasses. He didn't need to wear glasses, but he got these glasses that didn't have any magnification in the lens. But he noticed that a lot of these creative directors wore really cool glasses, so he got these cool glasses. Um, I'm not saying you have to do that, but it's just an idea, right? To combine, you know, that Libra new moon with Venus and Mercury being in the first house from your moon as well. So Venus and Mercury are there as well, right? Um, so that's quite interesting. We've got 30th of November, Rohini full moon. That's happening in the eighth house for you. So you may experience a culmination or a completion or something coming full circle, full cycle in relation to your extended family or could be to do with money or finances. Could be to do with other people's money or finances as well. So that is what we have there for you, Libra Moon. I'm wishing you a good month ahead. And what I want to say is, yes, if you would like to watch your um, Ascendant report as well, that's always a good thing to do. Then you can kind of formulate um, in your mind, like it'll be a bit of both. So the Moon report is going to show you your mind, your mood, how you feel about things. And the Ascendant report is going to show you the, the physical pathway of your life. And how things will unfold. All right, well, thank you so much, Libra Moon. We are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. I'm just checking the time. We're good. Right, what's happening this month? Well, mid month onwards, that's when the movement is going to be happening again. That's when things are going to, um, there's going to be forward momentum. Mars is moving forward. Um, we've got a new moon. So, you know, there's a lot happening mid month onwards. So, Sun will be first from your moon. Some might drain your energy a little bit. If you're feeling tired, don't push it. You might get headaches uh, as well at this time because the sun is right there on your head, you know, um, the first from the moon. So, and that's moon, okay, <laughs> so that's, that's it's your head. Uh, so just rest if you need to. Also, keep a check on your spending, okay? Um, could be a drain on your finances as well at this time. Oh, especially with Venus and the 12th house yes it's quite possible uh, venus and mercury 12 from the moon so this is a really good time to be creative in terms of your spirituality is there something you've always wanted to try but you've never had the time um, and this could be maybe a teacher that you want to try or a workshop or an online course or um, you know something new and different to do with your spirituality uh, I'll leave that with you. Have a think about it. But you know, there's, there might be some realm that you want to explore that you just you just never have. Fifteenth November, we've got Libra New Moon that is happening in your twelfth house. So yeah, again, we're with with the spiritual growth here. We've got this lovely new moon happening. This is a time to make a wish or plant a seed for your spiritual growth. And this is fascinating because maybe there's a gift or ability that you'd one day love to experience or have, right? Um, like channeling, for example. We've got Mercury here in the 12th house. I know a channeler who's really brilliant at it and she's got her Mercury in the 12th house in her natal chart and she's extraordinary. She can channel so many things and it's really amazing. But you know, maybe that might be something that maybe you've always watched channelers and you've never thought that that could be you, but maybe it could be you, right? Maybe that's something, you know, you might want to contemplate or think about or, or whatever it is. For me, I think the thing I always like to, um, I always want to, yeah, capturing ideas or being creative, that kind of thing really appeals to me. I don't think I'd want to channel as such. I think that's, I leave that to the experts, but I, some, like getting creative ideas, I like that whole thing. But I've heard that that's channeling too, you know. Um, some people say that everything is channeling, and I find that fascinating. I could talk about that for hours. All right, 30th November, Rohini full moon. What's going on here? That's happening in your seventh house. So you may experience, that's towards the very end of this month, you may experience a culmination in relation to your business. 
uh, your business partner or your marriage, or it could be to do with your career as well. Uh, maybe it's to do with your public. You know, maybe you're a writer and you've got a public or an audience, or you run a YouTube channel and you have people on the other end who watch you. Maybe there'll be some thing where you culminate or um, come full cycle or full circle uh, on, on something. Uh, could be a really interesting time at the end of the month there. So Scorpio Moon, I hope this has been a good overview for you. Remember, you can always watch your Ascendant as well. I keep forgetting to mention that in these mini reports, but yeah, you can watch both and sort of formulate um, a sort of in-between view. Your a Moon will show you your mood, your mind, how you think and feel about things. That's why I think it's the most important one because we're up in our minds most of the time. Um, your Ascendant will show you the path of your life, the physical path. Um, of your whole life so that's pretty big as well all right Scorpio Moon thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon welcome Sagittarius Moon thank you so much for joining what's happening in November well mid-month onwards we've got new movement we've got Mars moving forward so we're really looking at the 14th to the 17th of November onwards that's really the time that I'm looking at here in this report um, for you, 14th onwards, the sun's going to move 12th from your moon. What does that mean? Well, you might find it hard to sleep uh, this month with the sun being in that position. If you happen to find yourself awake at 3 a.m., don't worry, just meditate. Or if there's a mantra that you want to chant again and again, you can always, I've got these little prayer beads by my bed and um, I do the whole chanting. I do Ram, 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 like I just do that over and over. Um, you know, you can, you can pick something, and that's Lord Ram, obviously. Uh, that's you know, that's one of my go-to mantras. It's also good for the third chakra, that one. But let's have a look here. So you can meditate in the darkness if you're finding it hard to sleep this month. Don't worry too much. Sometimes we miss out on sleep. It's not a problem. Um, there's always fluctuations in energy. Your body will know when to catch up. Uh, I've got the note here, if you're very spiritual, you may make progress in life this month. Oh, that's good. Okay, with this sun, yes. I mean, look, that's the thing. If you're on it, which you probably are because you're Sagittarius moon, um, and if you're quite spiritual and if you've been doing your work and you know you've been doing your work, and you would know, um, I think you're going to make good progress spiritually this month. Growth. You can really make some progress shedding some old stuff and perhaps tapping into new abilities, um, connecting new strands. It could be really quite interesting for you. The sun may help you or drain. Yeah, so, so that, that's the thing. If you've been very spiritual and you are very spiritual and you, I know you are, you're tuning into this. but. Um, the sun wants to help you it might also provide a little bit of drain on your energy could be a bit of drain on your finances yeah finances 12 from the moon also a time to avoid arguing with your spouse uh, if you are in a partnership all right let's take a look venus and mercury are 11th from your moon oh, this is a brilliant time for you to be creative and i'm saying that across the board to all signs uh, I don't know if I'm going to call this episode Play On. We'll see what happens, but um, this is just a great, great time to be creative this month. And we've got a lot of sort of anxious energies, a lot of interesting things going on. And what I'm saying is reach up for that creative energy, express it into the world as a way of cycling out, you know, um, old energies that need to, to come out, uh, you know, being creative is such a good way to bring in the new and release the old. And I think that that's a good solution this month. For you especially, you've got these two planets, Venus and Mercury, the artist combination, 11th from your moon. So I've got the note here, try something new, be bold, be creative, have fun, um, share share your words and your wisdom and your art and, and what it is you create with people online in life you know um, make the person at the checkout laugh or smile all that kind of thing 
we've got Libra new moon happening 15th November 11th house so this is a great time to make a wish for a new job or promotion or money I'm just looking at the I've got a little flashing symbol there this might pass out any second so I'll try and be quick but I don't want you to miss out on your reading either so I won't be quick that thing can flash away um, make a new wish so make a wish make a wish so this is the Libra new moon great time to wish for a new job um, a new source of income for a promotion uh, for money this is a really great time to wish for that wish for abundance or plant a seed for what you would like to see grow okay that's the Libra new moon energy it's fantastic for you so yeah I know you're in your last phase of Sade Sate but the, the the new fresh energies of the fast moving planets are brilliant for you this month um, mid month onwards 30th November Rohini full moon sixth house so you may experience a culmination in relation to a project that you've been working on for some time or something that's been dear to your heart maybe it's a project that you've been working on for the collective for others maybe it's a work-based project but there's something around your work or your service in the world where you're going to feel a culmination or you might come full circle or full cycle on something. Hi Sagittarius Moon, sorry the camera got cut, the flashing battery thing decided to pass out. Okay so I think we were just about finished anyway. The last point I had to make for you guys was just to say that take some rest at this time if you feel the need because I think it is going to be a bit draining, there's going to be a lot of um, collective energy, a bit of you know and people are going to be anxious the, the election all these kind of things going on so um, if you feel the need to rest to chill out do that and use creativity as a way of cycling out old energies um, you know reaching up for something new alchemizing you know it's 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 just great creativity is a wonderful thing and um, yeah i think we all need to be a bit creative at this time all right sagittarius moon well thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome capricorn moon capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining you are at the height of your sati sati we're actually not going to talk about um, saturn today we're going to talk about the fast moving planets because i really want to see what's the new energy the fast moving planets um, are offering us new things shift of energy and that shift of energy is really going to come in mid month this month um, so we're going to have new movement Mars is going forward we're going to have a new moon we're going to have Sun move to be 11th from your moon oh this is wonderful for you so the Sun is going to boost your profile at work this is fantastic and in your network circle you've got a really nice Sun transit uh, this could be a good time to ask for a promotion or to um, even if you're looking like to switch job or to apply for a job or any of that this is a very good time for that so anything work related anything where you need to approach your contacts uh, or maybe there's an idea maybe there's some new project you want to start or any of that this is a really good time for that this is also a good time for gains in money um, hence I mentioned promotion and things like that but you could be gaining more clients if you're self-employed um, or more business contacts or all that kind of thing so it's a really nice transit you've got Venus and Mercury 10th from your moon so I've got the note here let logic lead the way at work right this is not a time to um, be emotionally invested in anything at work this is a time where you really want your logic to lead the way to be more mercurial to think a bit more don't emote so much um, with your heart at work kind of keep the heart uh, you know on the back seat maybe this month right don't put your heart into it keep your mind um, and your mercurial and logical self bring that to the fore at work this month uh, 15th November we've got Libra new moon this is happening in your 10th house oh this is fantastic well this is a great time to make a 
a wish for the next step up in your career. So this is a career time for you um, and this is a really great time to be contemplating what's that next step up, where do I want to take my career, you know, and you want to be considering the past as well, where you've been, how you can utilize all of that experience um, for the next thing going forward. It's really interesting. Sometimes in life, we're just focused on one step at a time, one day at a time. I do feel like on this Libra new moon, you're going to be given some breathing space to really think about, okay, where, where am I taking this career of mine? Is this really what I want to be doing? Uh, and how am I going to transition to what it is I really do want to be doing? Do think a little bit long term with this um, and look back and think about how you can use everything you've done to strategize where you want to be next. So this is a good time to really be contemplating career. 30th November you've got this Rohini full moon as we all do uh, in the fifth house for you. Okay, so you may experience a culmination in relation to your creativity, a creative project that you've been working on, uh, your creative skills. Yeah, maybe this is a time where you stop and you take stock and you realize, wow, you know, I have really built up all these skills over this time, over this long career that I've been doing or, you know, to recognize um, all the hard work you've been doing, all the skills that you've racked up, all that kind of thing. There could be a completion or a closing of a cycle in relation to, if it's not to do with your creativity, it could be to do with children, it could be to do with a romantic connection as well. So overall it's looking, um, looking pretty good, Capricorn Moon, but I just think it's kind of a career focus for you this month. You can also watch your ascendant as well, uh, if you like. And what I say with that is, so the moon will show you your mind, your mood, how you feel about things, how you think about things, and your ascendant will show you the physical path of your life. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's really how I see those two. But I always look from the moon especially because most of us live up in our minds most of the time, right? You know, we're always on phones and laptops. It's all mind these days. So, But it's also good to look from your ascendant as well. All right, Aquarius moon. We're now going to welcome Aquarius moon. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to take a look at the faster moving planets today. Um, I know you're in your first phase of Sadi Sati. I hope you're going okay with this. You've timed it really well. I don't know if I've said this to you before, but you have timed it well to start your Sati Sati now because I do believe that by the time you get out of this Sati Sati, the whole world is going to be in a much, much better position. So you've timed it well to have um, this Sati Sati come in. We're not going to talk about Saturn or Jupiter or those slow moving planets. I'm really wanting to look at where's the movement, where's the excitement. We need some fresh new energy. So I'm looking at the faster moving planets for all of us this time and we're looking mid-month onwards that's when we're going to have the movement so 14th through to the 17th we've got new movement we've got mars going forward we've got a new moon you're going to have sun 10th from your moon so this is a great transit um, the sun's going to give you energy to complete work projects this is really nice for careers so you know be ambitious work with the sun work hard um, you know, if, if you want to start new work projects, if you have ideas, if you want to express your ideas at work, this is a good time for that. Venus and Mercury are going to be ninth from your moon. So what do you want to study or master next? This is really interesting. Um, tune into your heart to think about what skills do you want to pick up? And this could be for life. This could be for your career. This could be this could be whatever you want to study. Really tune in with your heart and see um, see what it is that you are drawn to learn. I know for me these days I'm really drawn to learning about history. I'm finding it so interesting to go back into history and see what happened a long time ago. I just find that so interesting right now, which I never did before. So it's really interesting. Sometimes it might surprise you what you 
are interested in learning at any given time. So this could be a great time to acquire new books or audios, to find a new guru, to find new teachers, um, and use your heart energy. Really go with your heart on this one. Let your heart lead the way. On the 15th of November, we've got a Libra new moon, and this is happening in your ninth house. So this is a great time to make, make a wish for prosperity and luck. This is great. This is a really nice new moon to have. Um, if you're single, maybe you want to be wishing to meet that special someone. So wish for, again, it's a Venus kind of thing. Really tune into that Venus energy and wish for what your heart desires. And plant a seed. And by planting a seed, by putting our focus on what we're wishing for, we've got more of a chance of materializing that because thoughts become things so when we're focused on that thing that we want we're spending time with that and through time we also materialize things so this is a great time to be doing that kind of um, kind of thing definitely on the 15th of November now on the 30th of November we've got a Rohini full moon happening in the fourth house so you may experience a culmination in relation to your home life Maybe it's a culmination in regards to where you live. Maybe you kind of just look around and you say, do you know what? I get this place. I know this place. And I feel like it's time to explore a new place. Maybe you're a bit restless. Maybe you've been living in the same place for 20 years and you want to go and do something different. So maybe this is that time of realization where you kind of realize this place only has so much time left for me right? Um, it, it could be something like that. It could be something to do with your mother or your relationship with your mother as well. Um, a culmination or the closure of a cycle or the completion of something. Maybe you're going to move past a dynamic that, you know, has or hasn't been working or, or well, that hasn't been working, I guess, if you want to move past it. But um, yeah, it's, it's a good time for all this kind of growth to be taking place. So it's a good month on the whole Aquarius moon. Now, if you would like, you're very welcome to look up your um, ascendant sign as well. Take a look at that and see um, what that says. Your moon will show you your mood, your mind, how you feel and think about things. And your ascendant will show you the physical path of your life. So it's always good to watch both. All right, thank you so much, Aquarius Moon. We are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, what kind of a month do we have ahead? Now, I really see that the movement is going to start happening again for all of us uh, mid-month onwards. So 14th onwards, we've got a new movement happening, shifts taking place. We've got Mars moving forward. We've got a new moon. We've got quite a lot going on. You're going to have Sun ninth from your moon. Um, this is not the best transit, I will be honest. Uh, it could be a bit difficult. There could be run-ins with your superiors at work um, or even with the government. Any form of authority, you know, this is kind of a time where um, you might be clashing with some form of authority in your life. Um, you might feel drained. If you do, please take time out. Please rest. Um, and be careful as well if you're a gym buff or you go to the gym all the time be careful with your knees and your legs um, they could be a bit uh, more sensitive at this time with the sun being in that place um, Venus Mercury will be eight from the moon so this is lovely this is actually really nice great time for you to be creative and specifically to be creative with hidden and mysterious things or the hidden and mysterious side of life right um, what can you tune into or tap into or perhaps something will be revealed to you that you can weave into your creativity um, i'm saying for all signs that this is a really great month to be creative because it's going to be a really good way if you've got any anxious energy running through you or collective energy that you've picked up or any of that great way to cycle and flush that out will be to be creative to draw in something new and to put it out um, will be a really great way of, um, of feeling good you know because that's what we want to do so I've got the note here that yeah you, through your creativity you could explore the underside of things so that's really quite interesting um, 
I also wanted to just explain the thing of which I mentioned in a couple of other signs that Caroline Mace mentioned that you know if we're not being creative sometimes that can cause a blockage in the body or it can cause a health issue um, so I do find that really interesting let's take a look at this Libra new moon which is happening on the 15th of November in your eighth house so I've got a note here that you can make a wish for yourself uh, and for your extended family or for your partner um, your partner's family and you can also wish for money right wish for abundance wish big think contemplate um, planting a seed for you know you know maybe there are new income streams that you're really wanting to manifest right plant a wish plant a seed for that because where we put our focus our thoughts become things so do be spending some time on the 15th of November really thinking about what it is that you want to create going forward and especially those things that are going to bring in abundance and wealth for you now on the 13th of 30th of November we've got Rohini full moon happening in your third house this is quite nice I do believe this is a nice full moon for you um, you may experience a culmination in relation to perhaps some of your friends um, is this a bad thing or a good thing I've got the note here perhaps some dynamic will come to an end it's not a bad thing this is like um, this is like something will come full circle or there'll be a cycle or there'll be something that completes there'll be something that you may be able to mature and move beyond uh, I don't particularly see that you're losing any friends or any of that but it's like there will be some kind of maturity or you'll notice a maturity or there'll be something that that becomes full and that becomes known as well maybe perhaps you've learned an important lesson about others yeah there could be a lesson as well that comes through this time and how your courage can be all that it takes to make a difference in your life and the life of others absolutely this could be to do with courage and you know you recognizing what it is to be courageous in your life and what that opens up for you as opposed to when you're not it's a really interesting thing to be contemplating on the 30th of November so Pisces moon thank you so much for joining me and thank you as well to anyone who's managed to watch this whole thing <laughs> but I don't I can't imagine there'd be too many people who've watched the whole thing but if let's say you know you're doing the ironing and you left it on in the background by accident then you're still here um, thank you so much for watching everyone and Please do remember to like and share. Please comment if you would like to as well. I love reading your comments and I look forward to seeing you next time.